Hey everyone, John with Simplice here, and I'm going to talk about how to create an advanced portfolio grid in Simplice. So this is a Simplice Studio module, and it's basically going to allow you to showcase your work in a way that's a little bit more bolder and more visual than your standard portfolio grid. All right, so I'm going to open up Simplice to get started here. I have Studio Edition once again, and I'm going to click into a page. And then under Modules here, I'm just going to drag a new Advanced Portfolio Grid right onto my page. And it's letting me know that the grid is empty because I haven't added any pages or projects yet. And let's go ahead and just add some here. And if you don't see these in your list, just make sure that your page or project is published and not set to draft. So I've added those all in. Let's just uh, check out some of these different uh, grid presets we have here. We have the default, which is the horizontal full screen. I also have the text grid and then the split screen. So let's go with the default for now. If I save this and open up the preview here, you can already see just with the default settings, I have this really nice grid that I can then cycle through to see the different projects. I'm going to go back to the editor and let's just customize this a little bit more. If I pull up the options again, the first option you'll see is I can change the amount of images per slide here. So just some different effects there. Um, I can also enable page transition, so that's going to give me a page transition that's for this grid. Um, and then you also have the option to change the image size. Um, if I change it to original, it's just going to show the original image size rather than fill the screen like in cover mode. And you'll see I can now change these alternating background colors if it's set to original. Okay. I'll just set this back to cover for now. And then scrolling on down, um, here's the attraction and friction. So this is a way you can kind of uh, customize the easing of your slide. So if I set this really high, you're going to get this really bouncy effect when I slide through the projects. I'll just go through there you can see it's really bouncing now because there's um, we've adjusted that attraction amount so you can play around with those to get some different effects uh, moving on down you can also customize the styling of the title um, you can choose to have the project title or category and alternate those options um, you can also set custom fonts for the title. That's looking good. I'll set a, uh, a line height here. You can adjust that as well, so that's handy. Um, I can also set a font here for the project category. And then below that, we have the option to customize the arrows on the right and the left. You can alternate some options here. Um, you can even set a custom one with an SVG string path. So more on that in our article. I won't get into that now, but that's a neat feature if you want to customize that arrow. And then you can also change the size of the arrow. And then you have the background, that's for original image size. And then the mouse over effect. So we can change the effect of the title and image. So some different options here. Can even add a nice little border effect. So uh, if we want like a nice little border to appear when we hover over each uh, project. I'll show you what that looks like. I'll save this, go back to my preview. And you can see when I hover over here, there's this nice little border happening. So that's a nice little touch. All right, I'll jump back to the editor here, pull up my options, 
And we'll try the text grid now. Go down here, select text grid. And you can see this grid is already populated with my project's titles in a nice little grid. If I hover over, you'll see the background changing for that project's thumbnail. You have the option to customize this. I can choose to have the text vertically or horizontally aligned. And also change the alignment of the text. Play around with some different sizing options here. There's really a lot you can do. Um, we'll also change the typeface here. Size that down. Adjust the spacing. And then you also, with the horizontal option, can set a, um, a separator here. So you may want like a slash or a dot. It's really up to you. Do a dot. Can then set a color for this. And then I'll make the font match the font that I'm using for the titles. That's looking good. And then lastly, we have some mouse over options. So if I choose the sticky, you can see um, it, the mouse movement. The image is following the mouse movement here, so it's a cool little effect. Uh, if I set it to original, the image is just going to stay in the center of the screen here. Then you also have the option to adjust the sizing. So if you want an image that's a little bit smaller and not occupy so much screen space, you can set it that or bump it up if you wish. So some nice little options there. And then you can also change the effects of the title and image. So. You can play around with that if you want your title or just your image to fade in when hovered. So some interesting effects to experiment with. And then lastly is the title mask. So this is a really interesting option. Um, in order to get it to work, I need to set my orientation back to vertical. And then I need to set this to stick to mouse. And then you can see now the title is being masked out with the color choice there with the image. So it's just a really interesting effect. Um, and that about covers it for the center text grid, but let's see how this looks on the page. There, you can really see the effect now. It's just a really nice effect. We'll go back to the editor. And then the last option we have is the split grid, split screen. And now you can see our projects have been split on the page between a column and an image. If I scroll through, there's this nice little fade effect going on here. We have our project title. Um, you have the option to give a description and a button. So it's a little bit more of an editorial style layout, but just really nice option. Um, of course, I can pull up the options here and customize this as well. Um, I can change the orientation of the image and text column, as well as alternate uh, between these two. You can also set the image to original or cover. If set to original, you have the option to set the background color for the image. And then you can also change the alignment as well. Um, going on down to effects and transitions, once again, you can enable transitions for this grid. Um, you can also uh, disable the scroll reveal and you can also set a parallax effect. So I'm gonna set it to intense. Once again, we have uh, some options for the title, whether we want to show the title or category. 
From there, I can also format the project title. Bump up that text size. And you can also give a font for the description. As well as styling the button. Customize the label. And I'll give this a custom background color here. Let's make it give it a little nice little border effect there. Bump the size up. Give it a font, custom font. And then down here, I can also set a hover effect. So let's just real quick set a hover effect for this. All right, so now there it is. Okay, so now if I save this, let's see how this looks on the page. Scrolling down, there's that nice little parallax effect. It's looking really nice. And there is my custom split screen portfolio grid. Um, one last thing I want to make sure I mention too is you can also adjust the sizing of the columns here. So um, if you notice up top, I have the column set to 40%, uh, but I can also adjust this amount and just increase this or decrease it. Um, let's set it to about 60. Scan all preview. And there you can see the different width there. All right, well, that about covers it for the advanced portfolio grid. Feel free to experiment with all of these. You can get some really interesting effects. So we're excited to see what you create and keep on rocking with some please.